Hello, this is Brian Hegney, instructor of communication at High Point University in High Point, North Carolina. This video is geared toward my character design class. It's a very, very brief introduction to Unreal Engine, which is what we're looking at now. I do want to let you know I am using 4.22. It is the latest Unreal project. And the reason I'm using 4.22, even though we have 4.18 installed in the labs at High Point, is because 4.18 does not export a 2D game as an HTML5 that's uploadable to itch.io.com. So uh, 4.22, the one that has just been released, does, which means that when you're ready, because we're using 4.18 on the labs, when you're ready, you're going to download a, a version of 4.22 and then just import your entire game. It, sh it will work fine, and that'll be okay. So what I'm going to do here is kind of just show you the very basic. We've done this in class, but I'm going to show the very basic uh, how you change your character, right? So number one, the Show Hide Sources panel is always closed by default for some terrible reason. I don't know why. I'm going to click that just to un unroll that. First time users will not know how to navigate in their content browser when that's invisible. So I'm just going to show that. Number two, I'm going to find where my textures are. My textures happen to be in 2D Side Scroller. There's a folder called Textures right in here. Okay. I'm going to bring in my sprite sheet, and this is the one we've used that we just downloaded in class one day. Um, I'm going to click import. I'm going to go to my project. Now I did save this into a folder called sprite sheets, and I'm going to import that in. I am going to right click it and say sprite actions, extract sprites, and it just so happens to extract some sprites. That's fine. I'm going to save these all as robo sprites extract and I happen to know that the first group here are going to be my running animation and I only have a running animation I'm gonna use one sprite one for my um I'll use this one two three four five six or one two three four five six seven eight eight sprites for my um yeah, my running animation. So I'm gonna, I'm, but, but I'm going to do something before I do this though, because I extracted the sprites. But what I really need to do is go to my sprites folder and make a new folder, and I'm gonna call this Robo Run, and I'm gonna make another new folder called Robo Idle, Robo Idle, and another new folder called Robo Jump. Okay. And so let me go to my textures, let me twirl down my sprites so that I, when I go to my textures, I can actually grab all of my sprites, drag them into the appropriate subfolder, and I'm going to move them here, not copy. Move them there. Now, this one does need to, yeah, Robo Jump just by itself. We're going to move that there. Now, what I am going to actually do is come to my run one and I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to grab, I think, this one for my idle. I know. Well, I shouldn't do that. I should have had an idle animation prepared and I didn't. So, sorry about that. And I am actually going to copy it there because I want I want both. I want it in both places. Okay, one asset copied. Let me just make sure it's there. Okay. Now from here I'm going to I'll go ahead and I'll keep my flipbooks in the sprite. I think I'll do that. I'll keep my flipbooks. Well, I'll put them at the top of the over here. That'll, that'll be nice. So I'll take my idols, um, robo idle, right click it, create flipbook. Now this is called, let me rename this because I actually need to rename it. Um, it's called robo 
idle underscore flipbook. No. I'm going to go ahead and drag this into sprites and I will move it there. Robo jump, once again, create a flipbook. I'll call it robo underscore jump underscore flipbook. Drag that back up into that hierarchy, move it there. Robo run, this is where I get to select all of them. Right click, create flipbook. Robo run flipbook. Uh oh. Uh oh. Robo jump. Oh, good. I thought I had renamed it something. I thought I already had renamed it. And there we go. Drag that up into sprites. Move there. So that, okay, there's step one. Step two is to go into this actual character. Now, I know that that character is in, do I know? 2D side-scroller BP blueprints, and there's the 2D side-scroller character. That's this character. If you didn't know that, if you could select it in your actual viewport, you'd see 2D side-scroller character selected in the world outliner, and you could actually click that edit 2D side-scroller, and it's going to open this, right? It would have opened the same thing. Um, so a couple ways to get there. Now this window that it opens up is your blueprint for the character the side scroller character and there's three com three main components to the blueprint in this center window here which we'll be using uh, we'll be using two of them the viewport and the event graph now if I click the viewport and select this thing now take a look at what this thing actually is it's a 2d image it's a 2d image see and that 2D image is set to a flipbook, and it's set to idle animation. So what I'm going to do is go to Robo Idle, Robo Idle Flipbook. There we go. There it is. It just happens to be the same size. If it wasn't the same size, you would you could change the scale of the flipbook. So let's say if it's two times as wide and two times as tall. If you needed to do that, you could, um, and it wouldn't be terrible. Okay. So let's say compile that, and that should have changed it. Yay, it should have changed it here, which it did. Oops. Now you might say, okay, well, it's not on the ground, so maybe what I'll do is I'll actually lower that. There we go. Now it's kind of on the ground. Compile that. Now, when, now you might say, okay, I'm going to play it and see what happens. And I'm going to play mine in a new editor window. I just like to do that instead of playing it in the selected viewport. And that's by clicking this little drop down error, arrow. Okay. And now look what happens. It turns into the, the model again. And the question is, why does that happen? And I'm going to show you why that happens. Sorry, I just needed to see how long this was. I'm going to show you why that was that happens and, and I'm going to change that in the next video so if we go to our 2d side scroller character again instead of looking in the viewport here which we should have done this is fine this is a great way to do it um, but what happens in the event graph this is where the game logic is stored and if you zoom out in the event graph you can see okay here's the little bit that handles animation here's the code that handles movement um, tick updates animation and then this is the jump so what happens is as soon let's see tick so an event tick is the thing that happens every single um, every single frame update so if the game runs at 60 frames a second 60 times every second this thing is gonna fire off it's going to do this stuff that's attached to this event tick. It's a very common game event because it happens every single frame, right? So it's a nice way to say, do this all the time. So sometimes gravity, or in the olden days when I used to do um, visual, uh, when I used to do lines in basic, my gravity was set to every frame. I'd lower um, anything that had gravity by like, I don't know, point something feet right so every 60 times a second it was lowering something and that was based on um, actual gravitational pull and so I just don't remember what that was off the top of my head so the event tick is important what it's gonna do is every event ticket updates the animation 
every event take after it updates animation. Well, let's see what that is. This function here, update animation, is actually this stuff right up here. So this is this entire thing. And what it's doing is it's saying, hey, 60 times every second, it's saying, what flipbook am I? If I have a velocity, then I am a running animation. If I don't have a velocity, I'm idling, right? So that is why, even though in our viewport we look like this, when we play our game, it updates to that because it is actually firing off 60 times a second. It's analyzing if there's any velocity, and if there's no velocity, it's this idle pose. But if there's the iota of velocity, it's the running pose. You see even up velocity, down velocity, left velocity, right velocity. It doesn't matter. So that's what we'll change in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this. Bye-bye.